Hello, this is Mandy. I will be presenting our work on vision-based estimation of gait scores for assessing Parkinson's disease motor severity, accepted for presentation at Mackay 2020. This is a joint work with researchers from Stanford University and SRI International. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a progressive neurological disorder with symptoms including tremor at rest, slowness of movement, rigidity, postural instability, cognitive impairment, and psychiatric disturbance. Accurate and quantitative assessment of PD progression and motor severity are critical because it helps physicians develop treatment plans which slow further advancement of PD. Prior work on assessing Parkinson's with computerized methods typically use either dopamine transporter neuroimaging, which is often only used for monitoring dopamine levels and needs expensive and sometimes invasive imaging techniques, or wearables such as accelerometers or gyroscopes, which can be intrusive and costly. However, some methods using wearables perform not just diagnosis, but also rate motor impairments based on severity. Alternatively, physicians use MDS-UPDRS, a widely used clinical rating scale, which evaluates various aspects of Parkinson's disease, including motor complications. The MDS-UPDRS gait scale takes videos of subjects walking and evaluates them by severity. However, manual ratings from physicians on this scale are non-automatic and time-consuming, and scores are subjective. For the first time, we propose a computer vision-based model that predicts motor impairment severity using only video. We do this by first extracting the 3D human or skeleton data from the videos. This greatly reduces the dimensionality of the data, is efficient in the number of acquired samples, and anonymizes the data. Only the skeleton is used to estimate the gait score. Therefore, our method is entirely vision-based, uses non-intrusive video recordings, and is scalable because all we need is videos of patients walking. In MDS-UPDRS, gait is ranked on a five-point scale. In these figures, the dark lines represent the current pose, and the fading skeletons show movement over time. When an individual is scored zero, it means that they probably do not have problems in their movement. Score 1 means the individual can walk independently, but with minor gait impairments, while score 2 refers to substantial gait impairments. Individuals with score 3 require an assistance device for safe walking. We have removed score 4 from our analysis because these individuals cannot move without help from another person, and therefore their gait sequences are uninformative for this task. We can see that classes 0 to 2 progressively decrease in mobility, with reduced arm swing and range of pedal motion, i.e. reduced stride amplitude and foot lift, while class 3 becomes imbalanced. In more detail, this is a diagram of our entire pipeline. Our input data are video recordings of patient gait. First, we track and localize the patient in the video using the sort algorithm. Next. We extract the 3D pose from each frame by feeding the output of the previous step, sequences of images and bounding boxes, as input to spin, or simple optimization in the loop. The model was pre-trained on large datasets like Human 3.6M and COCO. Finally, the sequence of the skeletons are classified into the MDS-UPDRS scores using OFDDNet, our hybrid ordinal focal double feature double motion network. The skeleton data is used as input to our classification model, DDNet, a prior work, which computes two features from the raw joint data. The first is joint collection distances, or JCD, which preserves location viewpoint invariance, and the second is two scale motion features, which preserve global scale invariance. First, JCD and the two scale motion features are embedded into Latin vectors. Embeddings are concatenated and run through a 1D CNN to output a classification. 
in order to leverage the ordinal nature of the MDS-UPDRS scores and combat class imbalance, we added a new hybrid focal ordinal loss function to make OFDDNet. OF loss is a linear combination of focal and ordinal loss. Focal loss is used to combat the natural class imbalance in clinical datasets. It takes a ground truth label and prediction probability as input and has two parameters for focusing and weighting, which combine to form the modulating factor. The modulating factor downweights learning for easy negatives while preserving cross entropy loss for misclassified examples. Next, we leverage the ordinal nature of UPDRS scores with ordinal loss, which punishes predictions farther from ground truth more heavily using a weighted cross entropy loss. For our datasets, we collected 30 MDS UPDRS exam video recordings of PD patients from Stanford Medicine, along with their scores from a board certified neurologist. Videos from this dataset are not shown for confidentiality reasons. We included 20 samples from the public CASIA gate database, with videos shown here, to augment our normal control of non PD human subjects. Videos from each subject were split into several sub videos of 200 frames for data augmentation. We performed subject-based leave-one-out cross-validation. Our model only works on skeletons and not the videos. This minimizes the effect of dataset differences. Here, we show the performance of various DDNet models. The first model in this section, OF DDNet, is our best performing model on all metrics. It is followed by vanilla DDNet, and then our model without focal, and then without ordinal loss. The baseline CNN models take raw 3D joint data as input, and OFCNN uses ordinal focal loss. We can see that using DDNet as a classifier outperforms these baselines, and that both ordinal and focal loss contribute to the OF DDNet performance. The following show comparisons with other relevant methods. The first method is a vanilla DDNet trained with 2D joins as input, which reveals that 3D input works better than 2D input as even a baseline CNN has better performance. This demonstrates that 3D joints provide valuable information for the prediction model, which has not been explored before. We can also see that the regression model has lower performance than all classification methods, suggesting that classification outperforms regression at this task. Finally, we applied a deep neural ranking model, DeepRank, which had high confidence on predictions and poor performance on sparse classes, suggesting an overfitting problem that encourages the use of a simple ordinal loss for our small dataset. Across all classes, our method achieves reasonable performance. Our method sets a new benchmark for this task with macro average F1 score of 0.83, AUC of 0.9, precision of 0.86, and balanced accuracy or average recall of 81%. The confusion matrix of predicted versus ground truth classes shows that our method does best on control in class one, followed by class three and then class two. Clinical context suggests that our results are consistent with physician experience. As corroborated in the results of OFDDNet, the most difficult class to categorize in clinical practice is score two, since the MDS UPDRS defines its distinction from score one solely by minor versus substantial gait impairment. Our main takeaways from this project are that, first, using only videos and skeleton data extracted from them to predict MDS UPDRS gait scores works. Second, we propose a method, OFDDNet, and several preprocessing and training steps which obtain significantly accurate results on a small clinical dataset. And overall, our work demonstrates how computer-assisted technologies can provide clinical value by non-intrusively evaluating patient symptoms. Our proposed method is simple to set up and use because it only requires a video of gait as input. Therefore, in resource-limited regions with few experts, it provides a way to estimate disease progression. In addition, such scalable methods can help perform time-intensive and tedious labeling of data for research and clinical trials. Finally, our method can be easily generalized and presents the opportunity for application to similar video classification problems in the medical space. Thank you for listening. We also thank our funders. Please contact us if you have any questions.